Hey guys, my name is Tevin Achel, and today I want to talk to you guys a bit about satellites, STEM, and pursuing your dreams. Before we get too deep into it, I just thought I'd share a few tidbits of information that you may find interesting. So first of all, what is a satellite? Well, a satellite is defined as any object that orbits a planet or a star. So our moon, the moon that orbits the Earth, is a satellite because it orbits a planet, Earth. But did you know that Earth can also be considered a satellite because it orbits a star, the Sun? And if you already knew that, well, you already knew a lot more than I do. Satellites such as the Earth and the Moon can be considered natural satellites. But the satellites that we're more concerned with and the ones that may tend to immediately pop into your head when you hear the term satellite are referred to as artificial or man-made satellites. But why do we care about satellites? Well, many of the applications that we use in our day-to-day -day lives, such as televisions, radios, and GPS systems, depend on satellites. More generally though, satellites can provide us with a great bird's eye view of the Earth's surface, and therefore we can get a much better picture of how things look from high up. And in turn, we can collect a lot of valuable information about the Earth that we could not normally collect on the ground. But there are many more novel and interesting applications of satellites, many of which I'm sure you'll learn about throughout the course of this event. Last summer, I was an intern at NASA in Mountain View, California, where I had the opportunity to work on one such novel application. There's currently a very special satellite orbiting the Earth called Landsat. An organization known as the U.S. Geological Survey stores all the data collected by Landsat. And scientists at NASA, along with myself, were tasked with using the data collected by Landsat to perform a special type of flood mapping for disaster relief. To put it simply, we wanted to use the data captured by Landsat to be able to determine whether or not different regions of the Earth were flooding. If our program determined that an area is flooding, then we'd be able to more rapidly send disaster relief to that particular area. Before the invention of this application, all reports of flooding would need to be called in by human operators. It is our hope that this application can make the process of sending disaster relief to flood prone areas much more efficient and much more rapid. Now if you're wondering what on earth I could have studied to end up working at NASA for a summer, it's not as extravagant as you might think. I recently graduated with my undergrad degree in computer science from the University of the West Indies. If all this talk of space and satellites and NASA have got you really, really excited, then I definitely think a career in STEM is something that you should pursue. At NASA, on a day-to-day -day basis, I interacted with people with degrees from all different fields of STEM, from engineering to mathematics to robotics, even to my very own computer science. The point is, as long as you're within STEM, you can't go very wrong. And just between the two of us, all the money is in STEM. Now many of you may be thinking that you're far too young to be making these kinds of considerations. What degree you want to pursue, what career you want to pursue. But much like you, when I was in secondary school, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would one day work at NASA, if even just for a summer. My point is that even though it may feel like you don't have it all figured out right now, as long as you keep working hard, keep persevering, and never doubting yourself, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. I wish you guys all the best in the future, and I hope you have an enjoyable experience at this event. Thank you.